Hey, preppers and com offs. Thanks for checking out the podcast. Today, I'm going to be discussing something that's been on my mind a lot lately. The need for preppers to get a ham radio license. First off, I understand that preppers are an independent bunch who would rather have minimal contact with the powers that be. And you know who I'm talking about. I also understand that preppers need communications before, during, and after an SHTS situation. A good number of preppers have gone out and purchased a Bofang dual band radio of one flavor or another, and that's great. Okay? I applaud you for that. But when asked if those same preppers are going to get their ham radio license, a good number of them have wholeheartedly embraced the idea. However, there are some that say, I don't want to be on a government list, or I, you know, when a shit hits the fan, a license isn't going to matter. You're absolutely right in that last part. However, do, do they actually know how to use the Bofang or how to program it or what frequencies are used for communicating or that PL tones are not truly secure and only block out other people's conversation, but they can still hear yours? Probably not. And that's the issue. As a prepper, I, all, I know that we all need food, water, shelter, and first aid, right? I would add communications to that top because without communications, you are sitting blind. You have no idea what's going on outside the affected area. It's that simple. Your dual band 70 centimeter Two meter radios are good for local communications only. They are not long distance comms. CBs are not long distance comms. FRS, maybe get a block. Okay. MERS, maybe a little longer, maybe two, three miles. Okay. But the long distance communication comes through ham radio. Okay. Ham radio is not hard to get into. Yes, there is a test to take. Yes, there is a license fee. And as far as not wanting to be on a government list, if you own a house, if you drive a car, if you were born legally in this country, you're on a list. So please stop with that, okay? (sighs) You need to get a ham radio license for long-distance communication. A lot of people will not tell you that on 10 meters, technicians have voice privileges. That means you can talk, you know, the continental United States, Canada, South America, and Europe if the conditions are right. Okay. Getting a license also means that you have actually learned how to use your radios and you have the skills that you can build an antenna to get your signal out. Um, I've built several antennas out of speaker wire. They're temporary. They won't hold up for years on end, but in an SHTF situation, you want something that you can immediately put up, get your signal out, get information in, take down, and hunker down for a while. If you don't have your license, or if you have not taken a class to get your license, you have no idea what you're doing. You wouldn't know the correct length of the dipole antennas. You wouldn't know what a dipole antenna is. So please, for the love of all that is right and true in this world, if you're truly interested in communications, go and get your amateur radio license. It is not hard. It takes a little study. Once you do, you're set. You can practice with your gear all the time, okay? And I mean practice. Just like you would go out to the range with your your pew-pews, you can practice with your radio gear. You you wouldn't just grab a a pew-pew and... 
pick it up and know intrinsically how to use it. You wouldn't know its limitations. You wouldn't know if it had been fouled. Okay? The same with radio gear. You need to know what you're doing. These are not plug and play. So please, if you're interested at all in communications, get your ham radio license. This is K0MRD, your radio prepper, and I'm out for the day.